What's up YouTube? I'm Victoria, in case you didn't know, from Lemons and Lime. And don't mind my face. <laughs> I'm so tired. I didn't have the energy to put on makeup. I also just hate putting it on. Um, but I wanted to get this video made for you. So, uh, lately I've been getting a lot of questions about um, how to finance Lyme treatment and how to afford life with Lyme. Um, and if I could make a video about it. So, here we go. <laughs> um, I'm going to share... A couple of my tips that I know and use, um, but I didn't feel like I was the best person to uh, ask this question to, uh, which I'll explain in a moment. So I reached out to my Instagram and Facebook family of Lyme and Chronic Illness Warriors to ask what some of their tips were as well. So this video is kind of a combination of my tips and um, tips that I got from other people. So just keep that in mind that there are a lot of awesome people who helped <laughs> contribute to this video. Um, so first of all, uh, I'm in a unique position, I guess. Just I'm kind of lucky. I'm the only kid in the whole family. I have no cousins, uh, no brothers or sisters or anything like that. So um, I guess my family's just had uh, that money to put towards me. And then when I got sick, we were able to put that money towards my uh, healing process and all of my treatments. Uh, and then I'm just the type of person growing up where I saved a lot. Whenever I got money for my birthday or something, I never spent it. My grandma would be like, take this to the mall and go shopping. And I'd be like, uh-huh. And i put it in my bank account. Um, so I had money saved up that I've been able to use for groceries and things like that. But then also my whole family is just big on savings. So they saved a lot over the years. A lot of it was saved for uh, school for me, for undergrad and then graduate school. And lately I've been using all my graduate school money for treatment, which sucks, but also, we had that money saved, which is great. So my advice is that if you aren't sick now, <laughs> save. Start saving now. Have a health account or a big savings account because you never know when you're going to get sick or something's going to happen and you're going to need uh, that money. So that's the number one thing is start saving. Tell all your friends and family to start saving <laughs> uh, for themselves, for you, whatever. Um, my next, I think the biggest thing is just when you get sick, it's Lyme is really expensive. There's no way around it. Most Lyme doctors don't take insurance. A lot of treatments aren't covered by insurance or can be you can be cut from your insurance because you're on long-term treatment, things like that. So the first thing you need to do is start figuring out what your priorities are, like what you have to pay for. Let's say you're living on your own, you have to pay for rent, your car, and food. You know, whatever your necessities are, necessities are figure out what those are and make a budget and cut out anything else that isn't necessary the only thing I'm really lucky I live at home so I don't have rent at the moment but the only things they pay for are gas food and my treatments really um I don't go out I mean I don't have energy to but I don't have the money to go out um or to buy clothes or things like that like I just you know, I've cut out what I don't need, what I don't need to be spending money on um, because I just don't have it and you're going to need that money for treatment. So that's the biggest thing is form a budget and cut out what you don't need. Find free things like going to the park and having a picnic or watching Netflix um, or things like that that you can do for for entertainment or with your friends or, you know, significant other, whatever it may be uh, so that you're saving money. Only spend it on what you need to be spending it on. And a lot of people don't realize they're spending so much until uh, they sit down and look at a budget. So do that and figure out what's actually necessary. Uh, the other thing in terms of budget is discuss figuring out how much you really have to spend on treatment and discussing that with your doctor. I've done that where my doctor's like, I want you to be doing all these. And I'm like, I don't have the money for that. Like, I have this much money to spend per month. How can we make treatment fit into that? And my doctor's worked with me to make that happen. And so don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about it. Um, there's going to be certain things you're just going to have to pay for and, or figure out how to pay for and, or not do. Um, but if your doctor gives a shit, like, you can sit down with them and be like, this is how what I have. We have to make this work. Um, and then in terms of money, find little ways to make it. So like I can't work right now. This is for if you're not working or even if you are. Uh, I can't work right now. I'm going to be going to school. So again, not working. And so I find little ways to make money. <laughs> um, like selling stuff go through your house go through your clothes and figure out what you don't need and you can sell sell it on craigslist sell it at uh 
flea market or have a garage sale. Um, I use Poshmark, which is a way to sell your clothes online. I haven't made very much, but you know, if I make 20 bucks, there's you know, a little bit for groceries or gas for the week or something like that. So it, it, add, it can add up if you're um, on top of it. Find little ways to make money like that. Then another thing that a lot of people do for funding treatment is crowdfunding. So sites like crowdfunding.com. Um, there's some other ones I'm trying to blank on right now, but I'll link them below. So that you're basically asking other people for money to help you pay for treatment. And I know for a lot of people, this can be really hard and it can feel wrong or embarrassing. But the thing is that you're sick with an illness that people are not recognizing and it's not your fault. And you need the money so that you can survive. So don't feel bad about it. Create a crowdfunding link, share it with everybody you know, um, share it with friends and family, ask politely for help, ask the politely that they share that link with other people. It's harder to share it within the chronic illness community because nobody really has the money to give, but some people do, so share it everywhere. Share it on your social media. Um, also on most of those sites, strangers can read through um, people's crowd crowdfunding pages and figure out what they want to who they want to donate to. Um, and a lot of times, really rich people do go on there for charity reasons and you know will donate. Um, so you can get really lucky. And so that's why it's really important to put a good heart wrenching <laughs> description of your situation, um, not to use your situation in any by any means or like use your illness but be real and be honest and explain your situation in your crowdfunding page because that will attract um people who are really trying to help others and and want to donate to others so crowdfunding's a, a good way to try and help make money for treatment and every little bit counts right so like even if you only get a hundred dollars that may pay for a couple supplements which is better than nothing so don't be embarrassed to crowdfund um so I have a list here I'm looking at. So my next big thing is talking about supplements. So a lot of people are on tons of supplements from their doctor, uh, which just can be a lot of money and uh, sometimes useless. So I'm gonna give you some tips on that. First things first, don't buy supplements from your doctor. I rarely buy supplements from my doctor unless it's something that my doctor has made um, and I can only get from him. Otherwise, I buy them online. Don't be afraid to price hunt, I guess that's what it's called. Um, check out different ones. I like Amazon a lot because most of their supplements are way cheaper, like half the price than I can get them at my doctor's office. Uh, Vitacost is another good one. Herbs, etc. or herbs, something, herbs something .com. Um, You can just Google like the name of the supplement and usually a couple places will come out, come up that sell them online and they're usually a lot cheaper and they have like bulk discounts and stuff so you can buy a lot of supplements for a lot less money. Uh, the second thing with supplements is go with your gut on them. So a lot of times I'll be prescribed a supplement and I'll say this just doesn't feel like something I need to be taking or should be taking and I won't because your body knows what it needs. And your doctor is just going, well, you, know, you have this deficiency or this, 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 and this supplement helps. But maybe your body doesn't use the supplement properly and that's not what you need. So go with your gut instinct on whether you think a supplement's useful or not. Another way to check that, um, if you don't trust your gut right now, is to muscle test it or um, use a pendulum or something like that to to test uh, your supplements and see if you need them. So I do have a chiropractor and I pay him to muscle test my supplements, but it's been really helpful because I've been able to reduce that load, figure out exactly what I need, not take unnecessary pills and spend unnecessary amounts of money. I also have a pendulum, um, which is, you kind of have to learn how to use that, but you basically take a pendulum, it hangs down, usually has a crystal on it, you gotta find one that works for you. Um, I'm gonna link how to use a pendulum below. I'm not going to go through it in this video, but I can make a whole nother video on how to basically muscle test your supplements. Super easy way, just quickly, is to stand, take a few deep breaths, hold your supplement in your left hand against your chest, uh, and then you're going to just kind of gaze out. Don't really focus on the supplement, but gaze out you know, a window or something pretty or your dog and say, body, do I need this supplement today? If you start to lean forward, that's a yes. If you start to lean backward, your body doesn't need that supplement. Um, so that can, those tips may help you in terms of reducing the cost of supplements. The 
The other thing related to supplements is that um, if you're taking herbal tinctures, a lot of the times you can make your own from much cheaper. You can order bulk herbs from certain places. If you need a list of that, just contact me and I can help you find um, places to buy good quality bulk herbs. And then you can make your own tinctures, which is probably half or more cheaper. Um, you could pay $10 for like an ounce if you buy it or make it yourself and pay two dollars per ounce so making your own tinctures can be a little intimidating but it can save you a lot of money uh, and then again food is medicine you guys know I'm huge <laughs> into nutrition and using food as medicine um, a lot of times if you have gut issues that might for me sometimes I have to take supplements because I just or take shots of certain vitamins and like iron because I don't absorb it through my gut um, but if you can try and get your food from nutrients I found that juicing helped so much with that because it was easy to absorb I could get my nutrients in uh, and my vitamins and minerals in micronutrients and stuff like that but it's so much cheaper than overall I mean juicing organic food is expensive but overall it was cheaper than paying tons of money for supplements each month so don't doubt the power of food and I really encourage you. I know organic food's expensive and, and you know, fruits and vegetables and meat can be expensive or whatever you're eating, but it's worth it in the long run. Like that's something I would definitely say put money towards. Um, the next big tip I have for you is don't be afraid to fight your insurance company. And a lot of times like our doctors, Lyme doctors don't take insurance, so you kind of can't always get that stuff covered certain treatments and prescriptions you can fight them on um so if they reject you don't say that okay they're not going to take this have your doctor call you call is actually the best thing to do is call and if and call and call again so if you call and somebody picks up and they're like i can't help you call again because there's always that one person at these places these companies that give a shit about patients and humans and you can usually get through to them and they'll do the paperwork and like try and get your prescription covered or your treatment covered or whatever um so if you're doing treatments and paying out of pocket and you're trying to get reimbursement don't be afraid to fight them I know it's a battle and it's annoying and you're on hold and you might have to call a bunch but um if that saves you a couple hundred dollars like that's worth it so if you have the time and the energy um fight them and call again like I said call multiple times if you need to to get them to cover your stuff um because I think a lot of people are afraid or they just think that insurance companies it's the end all be all and they're not going to cover your shit if they say no the first time but they might so keep going uh and within that you can save money on prescriptions by let's say your insurance company doesn't cover a certain prescription there's an app called good rx it can show you the best deal on the prescription in your town like which pharmacy has the best deal and then give you discount codes so you can take it to your pharmacy and they'll scan it and then you'll get the prescription for cheaper um there's there's other apps like that but i like good rx it seems to work pretty well a lot of times pharmacies will have um or your doctor's office will carry like prescription cards that you can take into your pharmacy and that's like a code that will get you cheaper prescriptions as well so bargain hunting basically is what Lyme is about with prescriptions and uh, supplements bargain hunt don't be afraid to bargain hunt don't take the first price you see as the only price that's available um, even for for prescription drugs so you can usually get um, a little cheaper and ask your ask your uh, pharmacy too, like my pharmacy is great because if I go in and my, my prescription isn't covered <clears throat> by insurance, then they, some of them know me, so they'll be like, wait, hold on, I think I can get you a cheaper one. Other times, I'll be like, is this the best deal you have? And a lot of times they can go into their system and like get you a cheaper one. And if you're okay with a generic, I know sometimes we don't handle the generic as well as the name brand, but if you're okay with the generic, that can be cheaper as well. So don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to bargain hunt. Um, my last big tip is that if you are able to work, you are working or you're absolutely required to work, um, like it's just not an option for you to take the time off, find a balance. Do not push yourself. Like find ways at work that you can get through your day. Take the weekends and the time you have off in the evenings to make healthy meals and rest and detox and do what you need to do to support your system so that you can keep working and making that money to, to pay for treatments. Um, don't go all out with anything right now until you're healed. I think that's really important to remember. Um, and the other thing is that don't be afraid to ask for help. Like 
I know this isn't necessarily a financial thing. It could be. Maybe you have friends and family who are willing to chip in, but um, don't be afraid to ask friends and family to come over and help you clean or help you cook or um, don't be afraid to ask to move back in with your parents or back home if you need to, uh, to be able to rest and support your system or have somebody you know cook your meal so that you can rest and be able to go to work tomorrow. I have a lot of great friends who are always willing to do that for me and um, I know some people don't always have that have that support system, but if you do or if you're able to find it, I really encourage you to do that because it can be super helpful uh, for treatment and and being able to to get through this. So I hope this video was helpful and um, there were some tips that maybe you didn't know or or useful in terms of being able to finance Lyme and and afford life with Lyme or a chronic illness. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments or send me a message if you want more specifics. Um, I'll leave some links in the description box of some of the things I talked about today. And if you have any other great tips, don't be afraid to leave them. And then give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. It really helps my channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you want some more awesome videos. All right, I'll see you guys next time.